Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, and today we're gonna to be making quite a few freezer meals. These freezer meals are for my sister. She just had her second baby. I'm putting two pounds of pasta in my pot of boiling water. These are large macaroni noodles. One of the meals she requested was baked macaroni and cheese and broccoli. So my sister wasn't supposed to have this baby till next week, and this has kind of thrown me for a loop just a little bit because I was not planning to make these meals for her until next week. And I just sat one of my bags of pasta on my hot stove and just melted some plastic on it. So we're on to a great start. For her baby shower gift, I said, I'm gonna make you some freezer meals for baby number two. I said, can you send me a list of ideas, the things you might like so that I can make sure that I make her meals that her and her husband are gonna like. She also has a two year old baby girl so we're gonna do baked macaroni and cheese with broccoli. We're gonna do sweet and sour meatballs, and I'm gonna do three different marinated chickens for her. I have in my microwave right here some shredded zucchini because we're gonna also make some zucchini muffins for her for breakfast, snacks, and for my niece. And then I have some pumpkin right here, and we're gonna also make some pumpkin muffins. It is almost five o'clock right now. It is 4.50. And this is very late for me getting started, so we're gonna see how fast we can get these meals thrown together. I'm gonna to make double of the macaroni so Josh and I can have that for dinner this week, and double of the sweet and sour meatballs so we can eat that this week for dinner. So I'm gonna be cooking for her, but I'm also gonna be cooking for Josh and I for the week. I have some ginger snap cookies that I made earlier, and I'm gonna bake these and send them off to them as well. I don't have the time today to make up cookie dough, but since I have these in the freezer, I'll be able to bake them up some fresh cookies to bring over to their house tomorrow. I'm gonna salt my pasta water. You always wanna salt your water when you're making pasta. And anytime you're doing a freezer meal or you're baking your pasta, again, it's always a good idea to under bake your pasta just a little bit, so that's what I'm gonna do. And we are still in the middle of pantry challenge. This is February 1st today, and I'm doing my pantry challenge all the way through the end of February. So you are gonna see in some of these recipes that I'm gonna have to do a few substitutions because I don't have those items on hand, but I think the substitutions we're gonna make are gonna not affect the recipe at all. So you can kind of see how, you know, maybe if you don't have the exact ingredients in a recipe, you can substitute as needed. I'm running some cold water over the pasta to stop the cooking. We're gonna make our cheese sauce in this pot so we have less dishes to do. Before we make the cheese sauce, I want to make the meatballs up because those need to cook in the oven. And while those are cooking, we'll make up the cheese sauce and we'll make the marinated chicken. I am out of breadcrumbs right now and I don't have any bread made up or anything. So I'm gonna substitute oats in the meatballs you can substitute oats for breadcrumbs in meatballs or meatloaf anytime, especially if you're gluten-free, that's a great substitution. I just throw it in my blender and I blend it up a little bit. These are just rolled oats. You want just kind of a breadcrumb texture, so I don't turn it into flour. I have a, t oh! I have a ton of garlic we're gonna mince for the meatballs and for the marinated chickens we're gonna make. And one onion I'm gonna dice for the meatballs. All the recipes that I'm going to be using today will be linked down in the description box below at scratchpantry.com if you're interested in checking out any of the written recipes for yourself. And with no effort at all, we have some fresh baked cookies to bring up to them. I'm going to bring all these dinners over to them tomorrow. I just peeled all this garlic for all the recipes. Now we get to chop it all up. This is the bowl we're gonna make our meatballs in. The first bowl I had was a little too small. So we have our onions, our garlic in here now. We're gonna add our oats, eggs. These are fresh eggs I just collected today, so whoop. I 
I'm tripling this recipe. That was ginger I just added. I don't have any fresh ginger, so we're using powder today. And that's it for the meatball ingredients. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a mix first, and then we'll put the beef in here, and then we'll make it into meatballs. I probably should have cut these onions just a little bit smaller. Oh well. It smells good, that ginger smells really nice. We have our grass-fed, grass-finished beef. I almost forgot the salt. I'm gonna get in here with my hands and I'm gonna mix this all up. I have two containers. This one's for my sister so she doesn't have to worry about dishes right after having a baby. And this one is gonna be for us. I'm gonna use my cookie scoop for the first time to make meatballs and I'm really excited about it. I think I'm going to just make all the, the balls first and then I'll go through and I'll roll them all out. So if one of your goals is to try to get homemade, scratch-made dinners on your family's table on a more regular basis, one way you can do that if you don't have the time to do a massive freezer cooking day like I do sometimes, where if you're new around here, you can go watch those videos where I'll make 28 meals in five or six hours. If you don't have time for that, or you may have little kids running around and it's just not a practical use of your time, another way to try to get those scratch-made meals on your family's table is by when you're making dinner one night, instead of just making one serving of it, one meal's worth, double it and make two and put that second one in your freezer. It really doesn't take that much more time to make two. You've already dirtied the kitchen that one time and then you have one for now and one for later. That is basically what I'm doing here except I'm not gonna freeze the second ones for me and Josh. We're gonna eat the macaroni and cheese for dinner this week and we're gonna eat the meatballs for dinner this week. I am passionate about eating at home as much as possible. That is one way Josh and I like to save money is by not eating out a ton. Nothing wrong with eating out. We used to eat out all the time. We still do, but we try to save it for special occasions. But I don't want the pressure of having to cook every night. I, that's why we used to eat out at least twice a week is because I didn't plan ahead. I didn't have freezer meals in my freezer. I didn't bulk cook or batch cook or anything like that. And so when I was tired, we would resort to eating out, which is fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, except, you know, we realized we added it up how much we spent in 2019 versus how much we spent in 2020. And when my husband came back to me with that number of how much we ate out, and I about fell over. That's just me sharing the journey of us learning to eat at home more than eating out. I have our oven set at 400 and I have my butter melting in our pot to make our roux for our macaroni and cheese. So this beef that we used is 100% grass-fed, grass-finished beef. If you sign up through my link to ButcherBox, you will get two pounds of free beef in every single box you get because it is a subscription. Plus, you'll get $10 off your first box. So if you're interested in grass-fed, grass-finished beef, I will leave the link down in the description box. It's a great deal. I've been using them for over two months now, and I absolutely love them. The quality is fantastic. The chicken that we're going to be using for the marinades is also butcher box, and it's organic chicken. And I've just been really happy with the quality. We have one cup of butter in here. I'm going to add one cup of whole wheat flour. Normally I use white flour to make a roux, but because we're in pantry challenge, I have way more whole wheat flour right now. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. We're gonna mix that in and we're gonna cook that flour for just a few minutes. I really prefer to use block cheese and shred it myself because it doesn't have the anti-caking agents in it. It's creamier, it's smoother, and I think you get a better product in the end. But you can certainly use shredded cheese in this recipe if you'd like. We're gonna go ahead and add our milk now. We're gonna add milk and half and half. Now, I am getting very close to running out of half and half during this pantry challenge. We need two and a half cups of milk. And we're doubling this. We 
need to add a little bit of mustard. The time it took me to finish shredding all that cheese, our sauce is nice and thick. I tasted it with the whole wheat flour and it tastes really good. Has a little bit nuttier flavor and I kind of like it. So we're going to turn it off the heat and we're going to add our cheese. The original recipe calls for Parmesan cheese, Monterey Jack cheese, and sharp cheddar cheese. Well, I don't have any Parmesan cheese because we are in the midst of pantry challenge and I used it all. So the reason there's Monterey Jack cheese in this recipe is because it gives it a nice melting quality. And so I have some mozzarella, so we're going to put mozzarella in place of that. I have my sharp cheddar and I'm just going to add an extra cup of sharp cheddar in place or in lieu of the Parmesan cheese. We just don't have it, so we're just not gonna use it, and that's okay. It'll still taste cheesy and ooey and gooey and delicious. I'm glad that I have the mozzarella, though, because that is what gives us our nice, creamy texture. So we're gonna mix this in. I have it off the heat, or the heat is turned off, I should say. I haven't moved it yet. And anytime I shred cheese, I always shred extra. So this will just go in the fridge and I'll have cheese for next time we have tacos or something. And that way I don't have to shred it every time I wanna use it. Cause it isn't my favorite thing to do. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna take this off the heat now. I have three bags of broccoli I'm gonna to add to this big bowl. My family really likes broccoli in their macaroni and cheese. Who doesn't love cheese and broccoli together? So that is why I'm adding it. I always use frozen broccoli anytime I put broccoli in my macaroni and cheese. That way you don't have to blanch it. I'm going to cut some of these up because these were the florets. These were the steamers. And they're kind of big. So I'm trying to make them bite size. But you could certainly leave this out if you don't want broccoli in your macaroni and cheese. Then we're going to add our pasta. and our cheese sauce. I did taste the cheese sauce right after I took it off the stove and it needed a little bit more of that garlic salt so I added a little bit more garlic salt. We wanna get every last drop of that cheese sauce because that stuff is pure gold. dish for me and a dish for my sister. So one of the, kind of the funny things I'm going to do for this recipe is I'm going to use corn checks for the crunchy topping on this. Normally I use breadcrumbs when I top my macaroni and cheese, but I'm plum out of breadcrumbs like I mentioned earlier. I'm not sure why this wouldn't work. I mean, it seems a little weird putting cereal on your macaroni and cheese, but there's a potato casserole we make every Christmas where we put cornflakes on the top. And I figured once I crunch these up, it'll be kind of the same effect as cornflakes. So I'm gonna put some in a bag, we're gonna crush them up and we're gonna put them on top and we're gonna top with cheese and we'll see how it is. We need to make the sweet and sour sauce for the meatballs. This is brown sugar. white vinegar, sriracha, ketchup, this is homemade ketchup, and flour, just to thicken that sauce up a little bit. You wanna get that flour in there before anything heats up really quickly or it'll get really lumpy. You want everything going in there at the same temperature. So once we get this whisked in, I'll turn the stove on and we'll thicken that up a little bit. Our sauce is thickened up nicely. So now what we're gonna do is pour that over our meatball. Oop.
We're gonna pour half of it on each pan. That's gonna go back in the oven until those meatballs are done. This is one of my favorite freezer meals because the meat is already cooked. So all you have to do is warm it up. So if you have this meal completely thawed when it goes in the oven, it doesn't take very long to cook. The vinegar in the oven just, whoo, my eyes. My favorite way to serve those meatballs is with some white rice and steamed broccoli or roasted broccoli, roasted carrots, um, peas, whatever kind of vegetable you like. The sauce is incredible. I mean, obviously it has a lot of sugar in it, so it's not the healthiest sauce, but these sweet and sour meatballs are fantastic. This is really good on chicken too. So if you don't want beef, you can definitely, you know, use chicken, substitute the chicken. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna make muffins. I cannot find my large muffin tins. I have two of them and I have no idea where they went. So I only have these small six muffin trays. So I do wanna still make both the pumpkin muffins and the zucchini muffins. So I wanna get that going so we can start getting that in and out of the oven while we make the marinated chickens. After looking for probably the sixth time, I found my muffin tins and as my grandma would say, if it was a snake, it would have bit me. It was right, right where I thought it would be. I wanna make enough muffins so that Josh and I can have some in the freezer and so that my sister can have plenty for her and her kids. Perfect. I'm weighing out my pumpkin because this is homegrown pumpkin. That's crazy. I have the exact amount of pumpkin I need for two recipes. I'm gonna do a little bit of whole wheat flour because I'm running a little bit low on my white flour. To get through the rest of the pantry challenge, I wanna make sure I have enough white flour. So the recipe calls for a double recipe, three and a half cups of flour. So I did one and a half cups of whole wheat and then I'll do two cups of white. Doing pumpkin pie spice. I need to refill my baking soda in my kitchen. So I definitely did not do this in the order you're supposed to. So I would recommend you do it in the order you're supposed to, but I don't have time for that tonight. Like I said, I just collected these eggs today, so they are nice and fresh, so I'm not worried about cracking them into another container. And I don't have a rooster, so I don't have to worry about them being fertilized. Now that's everything. We're just gonna mix that all up together. Then we have a double recipe of pumpkin muffins. I'm gonna double check my recipe just to make sure I didn't forget anything. I've been known to do that. Oh, I did, vanilla. I just ordered more vanilla beans because I need to make more vanilla extract. That's all I have left and I go through a lot of vanilla. I always double the vanilla. That's the second time that oven has interrupted me. I would add walnuts to this or pecans or pecans, but my husband doesn't like nuts, so we're not gonna do that today. I didn't thaw out enough zucchini to make a double recipe, so we're gonna do a single recipe with the zucchini. Josh just got home, so my dogs are barking because they, they want to see their dad. Do we have a bit of a castristrophe out there? What? Do we have a bit of a castristrophe out there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was very disappointing. What, what, I thought maybe you were using it to like soak something up. No. Here's some pumpkin spice. I just use pumpkin spice in my zucchini bread. Really A little bit of salt. Woo! Too much salt. Take that out. That 
That should be fine. Josh just got home, so you can probably hear him. This is baking powder, flour, vanilla. That's why I'm about to run out of vanilla, because I pour a whole bunch in there. That's everything. So we're just going to mix this up. And then we're done with our muffins. Well, I have to bake them first, but... all that being said I did thaw enough zucchini to make a double batch so I'm just doubling everything now what Josh and I were talking about is I like to store my bulk grains and rices and things in the freezer for at least two days before I put them in my bulk food storage and I had a 25 pound bag of rice that I just purchased and when I went to take it out of the freezer it ripped in half never had that happen before half of it is down in the freezer and the other half was all over and still is <laughs> Uh, my garage floor, so I need to go clean that up today. I didn't show you or talk about it, but I took the meatballs out of the oven, and our muffins oop, are perfectly done. Yeah. I have all my bags of chicken here. This is all chicken from ButcherBox. I'm thrilled with the quality. I have four bags of chicken thighs and two bags of chicken breasts. The chicken breasts I cut lengthwise so they're half as thick. These we're gonna do smashed chicken. I wish I had a better name for it. It's basically a lemon garlic Worcestershire chicken and it's fantastic, it's one of my favorites. And we're gonna do garlic honey chicken and fajita chicken. I'm gonna keep one of each bag and my sister's gonna get one of each bag. I'm evenly dividing this garlic between all three of these, actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more garlic in this smashed chicken. This is the garlic that I pre-chopped earlier. So I'll have the recipes down in the description box, but I kind of just do it by eyeball. This is Worcestershire sauce. And then we're gonna put avocado oil. I'm, I'm running low on olive oil, that's why I'm using avocado oil, but you could use olive oil. All of these recipes need all oil, so I'm just gonna add a little bit while I have it out to each one. Oh shoot, this one was supposed to have butter. Oh no, we'll do butter here. This is homegrown basil. I'm gonna go in the here. Homegrown oregano. This is our Redmond Real Salt. I can leave this and a discount code down in the description box if you want it mined in Utah and lemon juice and that's it for that marinade that marinade is so good I'm going to add one onion to each bag I just sliced up a large onion. Mine, I'm not gonna put any peppers in because I have a bunch of these packages of peppers. I'll just know when I go to cook it, I'll need to add the peppers. But for the one for my sister, I'm gonna add these frozen peppers. I didn't thaw them, they're still frozen because they're just gonna go back in the freezer. A little bit of honey. And taco seasoning. This is homemade taco seasoning. I'm probably going to add about a third of a cup or half a cup. Mine is going to be easier to mix because it doesn't have the peppers in it. But I will just make a note on the bag that when I go to cook this, I'll need to add peppers. You know what I'm going to add to this? I'm going to add a little lemon juice to each one of these. Maybe a quarter cup. Last but not least, we're going to do the garlic honey chicken. So we have our garlic in here. We are going to put a little bit of sesame oil, which I'm almost out of. You can probably hear Josh in the background. He's putting more wood on the fire. 
Then we're going to add some soy sauce. And I make it a mess. A little bit of salt. Not too much because there was soy sauce in there. Some butter. We're going to use butter in this recipe instead of oil. And this is a clean cutting board and a clean knife. For good measure, this isn't in the recipe, but I'm going to add a little bit of the Korean red pepper flakes. Just a little bit. Oh, I forgot one very important ingredient. Apple cider vinegar. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any balance. It would just be too sweet and salty, but the vinegar is going to add just a nice little bit of brightness. I'm going to go ahead and wrap these up. Typically I wrap them in foil twice and then put saran wrap on, but my sister's going to go through these pretty quickly, so I'm not going to worry about the saran wrap this time. This is what we're going to have for dinner tonight, so I'm not going to worry about wrapping it. I am going to put one piece of foil on the mac and cheese for us for tomorrow or whenever I decide to bake it this week. We got 10 meals done today and five dozen muffins. That was super productive. We got five meals for my sister and five meals for me. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna text my sister before I put her meals in the freezer and she can tell me which ones she wants frozen and which ones she wants fresh. I haven't had a chance to talk to her since she had the baby and it was quite the delivery, so I wanted to make it as easy for her as possible. Before I run over there, even though it's pantry challenge, I'm gonna go pick up a couple salad mixes, some sour cream, some tortillas, so that she can finish off the fajita chicken. The best way to cook that fajita chicken is thaw it out if it's frozen, and then I like to put it on a nine by 13 or a cookie sheet, put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes until that chicken is pull apart tender. You can cook it in the crock pot, but it's gonna get really watery, and I like it cooked in the oven because then it gets really caramely and just browned, and the onions caramelize, and it doesn't, it's not cooking in a moist environment, it's cooking in a dry environment, so it just gets really, really good. So then she can pull apart the chicken, and I want her to be able to have all the fixings for fajitas, avocados, and things like that. And then for the garlic sesame chicken and for the smashed chicken, those could be cooked on the grill, those could be cooked in a crock pot or in the oven. I like to cook them in the oven because I don't have a grill, but they would be really good on a grill if my brother-in-law feels up to grilling. The macaroni and cheese, if it's frozen, it takes about two days in the refrigerator to thaw. If it's thawed, put it in the oven and it takes probably about an hour to cook, 350 to 375. When it's about 10 minutes from being done, Take the foil off, let it get nice and browned on top. You want it really bubbly. That's how you're gonna know it's cooked all the way through. Well, it's already cooked, but you'll know that it's warmed all the way through. The meatballs, I will probably, I'll ask her if she wants me to pick up minute rice or if she has rice. And then I'll probably pick up some chopped salad or some vegetables or something to go along with that to make it really easy for her. Maybe like one of those Asian chopped salads or something like that. I don't want her to have to worry about cooking sides necessarily. I'm sure she could cook rice, but I'll just text her and figure out what would be easiest for her. The muffins I'm going to freeze, and those are easy, and she can just take those out. Those only take usually about four or five hours to thaw, and then you have fresh muffins. And that is how I would prepare all of this stuff. You guys ask all the time, what, how do you, I like, cook these freezer meals? If you watch my Day in the Life or vlogs or even this pantry challenge series that we're doing right now, you can see how I cook freezer meals, and that's typically how I do it. I, I do like to cook them when they're thawed because if you cook them frozen, they take two, three hours. They take a really, really long time to cook. So I really do prefer to thaw them first. My husband is starving, so I need to get this food put away and we have the meatballs and I already have rice cooked from leftovers and I have some leftover vegetables. So, di so dinner tonight is already done. Dinner this week, the macaroni is done. I probably only have to cook one other time this week for us and we have 
a ton of meals. I might actually leave the fajita chicken out for us so we can have that this week as well. Just in this evening alone, we got my sister taken care of for five meals. We got my husband and I taken care of for this week, plus a few extra tons of muffins. And this was a very productive freezer meal slash food prep day. I hope this video was encouraging to you to kind of think maybe a little bit outside the box of how to fit in home cooked scratch made meals into your life. Cooking should be a joy, it is for me at least, but I don't wanna have to cook every day because then it becomes a chore. It doesn't become something enjoyable when it's a must do every single day. And this is how I really can fit cooking and enjoying cooking into my life is by pre-cooking some stuff sometimes. And then if I feel inspired to cook a really fancy from scratch meal on a night of the week, then I can, but I don't have to rely on my own cooking every single night of the week, but then I don't also have to rely on takeout. I wanna say a huge thank you to every single one of you who took time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate every single one of you. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you're new, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this bulk cooking video, I have a ton of bulk cooking videos I can link right up here. I also have a bunch of videos where we spend time in the garden and we harvested some of the stuff that we cooked with today. So I'll link that video down here as well for you. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you again for spending time with me. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.